Hi guys, I'm Shmi and today I'm going to give you an introduction, kind of induction tour to my new car, the Ferrari FF that I collected a couple of days ago from the dealership. So hopefully you watched the video of the collection experience because that was a pretty special day and I hope I surprised you all by unveiling a new Shmi mobile as a Ferrari and the FF of all cars too. I love the thing, I've done a couple of hundred miles in it so far so I've got to know it and I'm going to show you around now some of the practicality aspects, obviously the specification, talk about the colours and the sort of bespoke options that this car has. Now this video is a little bit different to normal because you can probably tell I'm shuffling around a little bit while I talk and that's because I'm standing on this the hoverboard this is from rollerboard who I'm going to link below it's blue to match my cars blue crew is growing you could almost call it the third blue crew vehicle um, but we're going to have a whiz around here round the FF I apologize for the wind noise we've got here in the park but I wanted to get this video shot and uploaded so you can see a little bit more about the car because everybody wants to know so I'll talk also a bit about why I'm buying, why I bought this car and the like um, but I think I must be one of the only people in the world who's ever um, shot a walk around video of his Ferrari on a rollerboard um, so this is kind of different to normal but I'm having a lot of fun with it you can do some pretty cool stuff with this thing um, and because the FF is the practical car I can even come and put it in the boot so that is what I'm going to do so I don't fall off and embarrass myself horribly so let's just open up the boot now um, and I'll pop this in practical Ferrari hey got a big boot put that delicately in and I'll come back to the boot and show you more of that um, in a moment the Ferrari FF then we've got a 6.3 litre naturally aspirated V12 an immense power unit 660 PS under four seconds to 62 and a top speed of around 210, 211 miles an hour. So there's enough performance on tap. Of course, it's the FF, the Ferrari 4. It's a four seater, as well as having a sort of hybrid four wheel drive um, powertrain system. So early in the delivery of the power, you have all four wheels operating, but up at the top end of the range, you're running rear wheel drive. So it's a, quite a lot of fun to drive while having the traction you need in bad weather conditions. So it's kind of Ferrari's daily driver. Um, my usage plans aren't entirely to be as a daily driver, uh, more like a support car, um, but I'll tell you more about that in due course. This particular car is finished in Le Mans Blue, which is a historical Ferrari colour. It's not a standard palette range colour, it's an option bespoke that was specified by the first owner of this car. It's a beautiful colour, dark blue, sort of pearlescent effect when you get the light on it and the blue pops through significantly more. Um, but it's kind of subtle and very very smart which is I think what this car is about and what it needs on the interior I've got a creamer finish a very traditional Ferrari creamer finish goes very nicely with the dark blue so I'll get to that and, and show you that shortly as well other exterior options we've got the two-tone finish diamond cut wheels with the Rosso Corsa brake calipers carbon ceramics of course standard um, on all Ferraris uh, but I love this design the twin five spoke or ten spoke kind of design very smart and around the front matching the sort of shiny color we've got um, the chrome finish grille that seems to have picked up a leaf let's remove that and um, so the chrome finish and while I'm here actually my number plate I'm sure you've noticed that Shmi SH10 MEE the closest I could almost get to Shmi 150 um, best I can do <laughs> I thought that was quite fun that's just a standard um, British government issue plate around the sides We've got the Scuderia shields. You can't really have a Ferrari, in my opinion, without those installed. Um, and the black sort of finish here is optional extra as well. As I come round towards the rear, the sports exhaust tips are, a fit, are an option. Standard exhaust system, which sounds mental. You would never need anything else. Um, but the tips are an option on the car. So I think the spec from the exterior is beautiful. It's exactly how I would want it. Um, dark blue, red calipers, this choice of wheels. So when I saw this car listed in the classifieds, it did not take me long to say, yes, that's the one. Let's just whiz up now and have a look at the interior. Locking and unlocking the car, we have the iconic Ferrari key. Sort of the newer cars have keyless systems, but I absolutely love this thing. Everybody knows what it is. Um, standard sort of button configuration, unlock, lock, and for the boot. So if I unlock it, you get the double beep but it's quite familiar amongst Ferraris. Normal doors that open outwards, and then you're greeted by the beauty that is the Crema interior. Now, I am in love 
with how this looks. I'm a little bit nervous about keeping it clean. Um, I'm hopefully going to come up with some good systems uh, for that and boss my passengers around a little bit. But it is stunning in here. It's absolutely stunning. From the cream of finish, we've got the blue piping and sort of um, finishing uh, different materials, the blue stitching around here. The dashboard and the steering wheel are finished in dark blue scuro, which is an option as well. We've got blue scuro carpets, Alcantara carpeting down there as well. Um, all the silver finish on the pedals. It's just a really, really nice specification in here. We've got the seats, the fully electric seats, of course, memory seats, lots of lumbar support controls, um, the heated seats, uh, which heat up incredibly quickly, I'm not going to lie, which is uh, quite nice. As I step in now, and I'll pull the door closed behind me, you can hear with the double glazing windows, it gets very quiet very quickly. Um, this car is brilliant as a sort of cruiser, just being quiet and comfortable and just very, very nice. And you're greeted here by a pretty cool display. I've got the LED driving, sorry, the LED, the carbon fiber driving zone, which comes with the LED steering wheel with the shift lights here, which have sort of five red dots that light up as you get towards the red line. Of course, we've got this blue Skiro steering wheel with the leather that I mentioned, uh, which is a pretty cool piece itself. Um, carbon fiber at the bottom, the LED, sorry, why do I keep getting that wrong? The carbon fiber driving zone also comes with the carbon fiber paddles down on the left, up on the right, um, and the carbon fiber bezel around the rev counter. It also has the optional white um, rev counter display as well. Um, you can have that in a series of different colors. On the steering wheel, um, if you didn't already know, the most famous thing for Ferraris is the Manatino switch, which has a number of different settings. Typically, they would start you off in wet, um, wet mode obviously is going to limit what the car will let you do. Comfort is perhaps a little bit more normal, keeping the suspension soft, uh, but opening the valves up a little bit more. Sport, things get a little bit more active, um, let's say. It's louder, it's faster, the shifts are more exciting. But when you go in sport and the suspension firms up, you can also use the bumpy road button um, to soften it back down slightly. So I'm enjoying the good balance of driving in sport with bumpy road pressed. Um, sort of seems to be the best configuration for having fun uh, without losing comfort. And then there's no sort of holding position for ESC off, but if you hold it there for a couple of seconds, traction will turn off. And that is completely off. Um, so it's quite an easy system for that. Also on the steering wheel, you have the indicators. Um, you press once to flash it, you press it again to turn it off, or you press and hold for like a triple, um, a triple flash. You have the lights pushing away or pulling towards you, and you have the same with the wipers. Um, once towards you for one wipe, hold it towards you to run the washers um, or push away sort of successive number of times to go up through the different speed modes. Um, the first one being automatic, of course. Um, on the back of the steering wheel, if I can show this, you might not know, there are jog controls here for going up and down the tracks um, on your music um, and the volume on the left side. So I think a lot of people don't actually realize um, those controls are there, um, but that makes life quite easy. Around here, we've got the light control, automatic lights, fog lights, um, different parking light modes and settings. It's quite a nice dial, actually. Um, the air vents are really cool. Um, five in total at the front, two at the rear. I'll show you the rear in a bit. Um, I like the design a lot. They just look nice. And obviously, with so many of them, you've got lots of air pointing everywhere you could want it. Further down here, you have a couple more buttons. This one is the lift system which raises all four wheels. I'm finding that the normal car is not actually a problem anyway. Um, I'm getting over speed bumps without issues, but if you do want to, you can just press that. The car goes really, really high, and then you have no problem. Um, then here you've got the electric handbrake, which self applies when you come to a stop um, and take the key out, or self disengages as you start driving. Um, and then there's the auto on and off button for it as well, but it's quite an easy thing to uh, just pull, and then you can hear the handbrake applying. It was off just before that. Um, so that's pretty easy. On the doors themselves, you've got the uh, mirror control, um, folding as well, of course. Um, don't think they'll fold without the uh, ignition on or because I haven't moved it for a bit. Open and close the doors with that. And um, then you've got this nice storage pocket down at the bottom too, which is really big so you can fit anything you need into there. Now, before I get towards the left, um, let me just turn on the ignition for a bit. You can hear the car coming to life. The seatbelt is fed to me with this arm here. And then we come around and look at the dials. So we've got two TFT displays in here. 
On the right hand side you've got the speedometer. If you have the navigation set this display will change to navigation because you have a digital speedo down here on the left. And then on the left you have this dial that you could this display that you can control through these buttons down here. Um, so it's quite hard for me to show you this exactly. Um, but you've got a number of different settings. If you just press the OK button, it cycles through your trips and things. The car's coming up now nearly 10,000 miles. And if you press left and right, you can go through um, different display screens. So you've got the uh, oil and water temperatures, um, oil and oil pressure and battery status, and tyre pressures as well. So there's the tyre pressure monitoring system. And then in the bottom left, you can see that we've got a nice full tank of fuel in the car right now. I've just filled it up. Um, you also have VDA, where you can see the vehicle dynamics information. Um, I need to play around with that a little bit more and understand more about what that's all about. And then if you press main, you can get into these other controls. So set up lots of the stuff you expect to see um, in there. I'm not going to go through it all. It's probably quite boring, but um, kind of standard car stuff, let's say. Right, you can go into the trip information. Um, you can see well, maximum speed. What a wicked amount of speed to be able to get to on my way into London earlier. Um, then uh, down for status, oh yes, that takes you back to the first screen and then left is a shortcut into VDA as well. Um, so we'll go back to status because that's kind of the standard screen. This is the cruise control called Pit Speed on Ferraris. Um, you press and hold it to turn it on and off. You set it by going left and right to twist the dial. There's a little light that lets you know it's on down there. Um, so that's quite easy and nice to use and works quite neatly. Moving towards the centre console, so we have this display. Now this system, remember the car's over three years old, um, is all a little bit old in terms of how it appears. Um, but it does the job perfectly, you know, you've got, you can select your iPod, it's got my phone coming up too. Um, it has a TV tuner, um, you can open and close it and then put a DVD in there if you want, which you can watch on the optional entertainment system that's in the rear, we'll get to that too. Um, menu, more settings and things to play with, nav of course. Um, I've not actually used it now for anything yet. Um, let's see, yeah, in the centre of Hyde Park in London. So that's a little bit outdated, but the reality is for me, I tend to just put my phone on Waze on a mount up there anyway with a charging cable because that works better for my life and how I like to do things. Um, one thing I didn't mention, the camera's here. If I press this, it brings up a sort of split view front camera where we're looking out to the front left and the front right. Or you can press it again and you've got the direct front view. Um, which helps a lot and then when you go into reverse um, it would bring up the rear camera on the same display and I love that being right in front of you um, that display does not interfere in any negative way um, back on here we've also got obviously media the hi-fi system is brilliant unfortunately I can't play music to demonstrate it because um, copyrights and all of that but the hi-fi in here is fantastic I love it um, the iPod itself sits in this compartment here, if I can open it. So I've just got that wedged in, um, plugged into a USB port in here. Uh, but there's also a USB port under this flap next to the AUX socket. Um, but it works very well having it in there. But I say that now I'm not going to be able to get it closed now that I'm filming and the wire's in the way. <laughs> I've got an awkwardly large case on my phone. Right, I'm just going to leave that open because it'll be easier. Um, this, painted in Le Mans Bleu as well, is an option. Having that to match the exterior paintwork. Um, I like that, that's pretty cool. And then you've got a button here to open the glove box, which is quite a big um, storage box. Um, so that works nicely too. Down in the middle, you've got this sort of flying console thing. And now this is really nice. These grab handles are quite squishy, but really nice feel to them. So you kind of just want to sit here and hold it. Um, equally with the uh, handle on the door as well. Just nice finish. Um, you can have this in carbon fiber, but I think it works quite nicely in the silver on this car. It matches some of the other bits and pieces around. Um, but basically when you've started the car up, which to be honest I should probably do now, let's uh, do this, what you do with that big red button. Nice. Love that noise. When you started it up, to go into gear you would pull on the paddle and it would go into first. You can see the hold is still on and it's in auto. Always turns on in auto, but if you want to take it out of auto, one press and you can see the auto has gone and you're now manual on the paddles. Um, into reverse, press the reverse button, and you can see the reverse camera with guidelines comes up as well. Um, if you wanted to do a launch control, you would go through that sequence, but I'm yet to try that. Um, if you want to go into neutral, I obviously can't do this holding the camera, you would pull both paddles together. Maybe I can have a go the awkward way. There we go. Now we're back in neutral. Um, hold is still on, of course, um, so the car is not going to roll anywhere. Um, yeah, so that's the buttons you've got down there. 
a nice little uh, Ferrari prancing horse in the middle, hazards, window controls in the middle. Unusually, one touch on the driver's side, which is wonderful, but I think it's not one touch on the passenger side. Oh, it is one touch down. Maybe it wasn't one touch up. Yeah, no one touch up on the passenger side, which I find a little bit strange, um, but I'll survive that. I'm um, looking over there. I love this FF logo on the dashboard here. I think that's a really cool touch. I'm going to try and put this, close this again. Close. There we go. I got it. It's magic. Um, so what else do we have around? Those are just the parking sensors. I think there's some people walking around. Um, here, Alcantara finish on this, which is nice, um, on the cup holders. Unusual sort of combination of cup holder sizes, um, but I think they pretty much work for fitting everything you could want in. And here you've got a cigarette socket which you can position forward so the cables can come out or tuck away if you want to remove that. Then you've got the storage box here where I've got all sorts of junk, charging cables, my garage door fob, sun cream, <laughs> stuff I need. Um, so that's all pretty good. But yeah, there's no question, this is a very, very nice position. Um, the way you look around here. And then you can do a lot of that too, but I'll be showing you more of that at a later date. I think the only other thing I haven't talked about from the driving position uh, is a little bit more about the spec um, and obviously the dual zone climate control um, we have here, which is more or less what you'd expect. Temperature dials, turn off mono, have the dual zone, put it back on mono, or just manual, manual settings as you would like. Uh, windows as well. Oh, I know what I haven't talked about. Heli, H-E-L-E, -E, um, the emissions button here, which is stop start to the rest of us. Um, this car with a V12, will stop the engine and start it again when you park up or pull up at a traffic light or something, which is um, quite unusual, <laughs> quite funny. Um, different to other cars though, if you turn that off, it then stays off. So stop and start off. When you next turn the car on, it will still be off, um, which is quite nice. But obviously lowering emissions is for everyone's benefit. And I quite like it on actually, it's quite fun because you get to hear the, the uh, V12 starting up over and over again, which is my idea of heaven. Um, so I'll survive with that. Um, spec wise, we've also got the blue Scuro leather dashboard with the white stitching. Um, the blue Scuro leather on here I mentioned. The horns are here by the way, not in the middle, here with your thumbs. Um, and mostly creamer but with blue um, finishes all around us. Um, even the stitching up here on the uh, um, sun visors which is nice too. So I'm going to shut this off done by turning the key, wait for the handbrake to apply, and then it releases and pulls straight out. Uh, I'll jump out and I'll show you the back. So as I spin around here, the way you get in the rear is you raise this up, lean it forwards, and then it will automatically move forwards. When you then pull it back, it will revert to the position it was in before. It just moves and shuffles up and down just to make getting in the easiest possible. I'll step through and into the back. Now, we had the seat there in my driving position. So I'll put it back and you can see how much space there is. It comes back, so it's not huge amounts, but my seats, you know, my knees have room in front of me and I do have the seat quite far back, to be fair to myself. Um, so this is, you know, quite comfortable. The seat is very bucket seat-like, very supportive, um, absolutely no issues, no uncomfort problems. And you'll notice if I put this to head height, we're sat quite high. So you do actually get quite a good view forwards and out. And the side windows as well, right next to you, you do generally not feel very claustrophobic and it's nice. And because the interior is also light with the creamer, but has different stitching panels, um, it's just quite a nice place to be. It's quite airy and open. And you have these lovely grab handles too, which are magnetic um, up to the uh, side. I think they're pretty nice. Um, and of course, We've got these, the rear entertainment systems. Not that I've actually played with this even once yet, so I don't know how it works. I guess the ignition's not on, so of course that's not going to work. Um, but there's a DVD changer in the boot that I'll show you as well. And that all connects through to that. Um, then here we've got the um, two air vents I mentioned in the rear, um, which work well. We've got a couple more cubby holes and compartments. We've got small little cup holders here. Oh, close that. And then we've got another um, storage box with the remotes for the entertainment system another cigarette socket and some inputs so we could actually run a games console or something in here that would be quite awesome I'm getting ideas I'm getting ideas and then behind us you have this sort of through load system to the boot uh, but we'll run around to the boot and I'll show you that in more detail um, these seats all fold down actually maybe if I do that from here and we can go around and see what it looks like from the back fold them back up um, you can see that there's going to be a lot of space you can have somebody sat back here with both of those down 
um, fit some suitcases in, pile it up, um, and you'll be very happy. So in the back, all is good. You can see there are speakers everywhere. That's why the hi-fi system is so good in the back here. Well, in the whole car. Um, and this is the like mechanism that brings the seatbelt forward for the driver. So yeah, around the back, it's a pretty nice place. Um, I think anybody in the back of a Ferrari is not going to complain anyway, um, especially because you've got the noise of the V12 all around you. Let me jump back out. Seat goes forward, and it makes getting in and out significantly easier than it would otherwise be. It's actually not hard at all, which is quite nice. And you've got more blue carpets back there as well. So to open the boot, there are two things you can do. One is pressing the button here, right next to the fuel cap, fuel filler release. I'll press both of them. You can hear the noise of the boot popping there. Shut the door, it's come around. Fuel filler cap, there's no internal filler, so you literally just put the uh, nozzle straight in. When you're done, just close it, easy. If you had wanted to open the boot with the button, you can just press and hold the button and it will pop open. Let's lift this up. So in here, we've got more optional blue Scuro leather. That's the uh, parcel shelf, the boot floor here. I think the fuel tank is under that actually. 92 litre fuel tank. Um, and the boot floor as well, there's a toolkit under the bottom. Slightly awkward for me to get at with everything here. But we've got the head headsets for the rear entertainment. Um, I've got all the books and service manuals and stuff, uh, first aid kit, everything you sort of need in these kind of cars, especially when you're off on road trips. Um, the release for the seats are these controls here, uh, which just pop it and fold it down. So it's quite easy to do this actually from the rear. You literally just do that and then it's fully open. You can take the parcel shelf out nice and easily too. Done. Um, rotate that round. So you can see that this thing is quite practical. You can fit skis, you can fit bikes, you can fit some pretty big stuff in the back of this. Um, so yeah, no issues there. Um, and then on this side, you've got a cigarette socket again in the boot. You've got this flap, which reveals the DVD changer at the bottom, uh, but also the plug where you plug in the um, trickle charger, uh, which is, oh, that's the trickle charger, the first aid kit's under the floor, um, which I haven't used yet because I've been driving the car every day. Um, so nothing to worry about there. And it's kind of actually quite a cool view looking through the whole car from the back there. Um, what else can I show you really? Um, it's a pretty awesome machine. I'm absolutely loving it and looking forward to getting on the road properly. I'm adding this clip in retrospectively because I realized that very foolishly I failed to show you one of the main things I was going to show you in this video. And that's what happens under the hood. So to open the bonnet, firstly, let me swing the camera around, grab the key from my pocket, uh, unlock the car. The way you open the bonnet is via a lever down here in the center, the red lever. Pull that, you can hear it opening up. So you have to excuse me for doing this later on, but find the catch, it's here. Now, are you ready? There we have it. 6.3 litre V12. Absolutely gorgeous. This thing is stunningly beautiful. The engine of the Ferrari. And you can see where it's mounted, it's sort of mid front. It's miles behind the front axle. Very long bonnet. But what a stunning thing to look at, hey? Really, really beautiful here in the engine bay. And I'm guessing I should never need to, ever need to change anything. I think washer fluid is over there. Um, but that's quite, quite, quite special looking in there at the beast, the engine. Right, so back to where we were. We shut down the boot, which done like that. On newer ones, you can actually get a powered tailgate, um, but obviously that newer car means higher price point, and I fell in love with the spec of this, so this one was the car for me. Um, didn't take desperately long thinking about it to think I wanted to go for this. And I'm going to do another piece talking more about, more detail about why I went for the Ferrari, why I bought the FF, why I bought this FF, and those kind of things. But basically, consider this car sort of my support car. It's not my daily driver. It's not because I don't go to an office every day. It's not like I just drive um, long distances either because I'm based in central London. But it's the car I'm going to drive down to Italy next week while the 675 LT is on a truck down to save the mileage on that. So it's more, you can take three people, loads of stuff, and do it in a pretty stylish way. I'm gonna take it on a ski trip next year. I'm gonna drive down to the Alps, see if I can find some snow to drive around on, four-wheel drive, test it out. Of course, I'll put Soto Zero Pirelli um, snow tires on the car. Um, so it kind of fits into life that way, even out the mileage, share it between the cars, 
entry into Ferrari, first Ferrari. Um, loving the experience so far, having a lot of fun with them. Um, opportunity to try new things and perhaps open some doors to filming new cool stuff for you guys in the future. So I think a lot of this car um, for me is, well, one, the ownership, because it's just awesome, it's a Ferrari FF. And I'm gonna share all of that with you and let you enjoy a big part of it too and come on these adventures with me with the videos. But it's also what doors it might open and what else we can do in the future that's ultimately just gonna make some more, more, more cool videos. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy with it. The spec is absolutely glorious. Like I said, I, w I don't think I would have bought a black one, a red one or a white one, but when I saw this, it was job done. Uh, literally saw the classified, went to view it the next day, uh, and then game over. Because with Ferrari's used car system, it comes with two years approved warranty. Two years of warranty, I don't think I've owned a car for two years for a long time. I'm fairly addicted to chopping and changing, buying at the good right rates, trying to find a good bargain, good deal relative of course and then getting the best possible when you move it on to the next home uh, but also the seven year service pack that you get on all Ferraris that are newer than 2010 so this car is three and a bit years old I've still got years and years of servicing all included nothing to worry about so that's a very sort of easy ownership proposition and a very quick draw in for somebody like me who's interested in a car like this so really it was a case of went down had a look at it nothing wrong with it at all um, and it was signed sealed delivered I've seen a lot of questions asking about the paint protection film and uh, detailing of the car. So the paint being a dark colour is very sensitive to swirl marks and things, so it does have a few and I'm going to go and get the car detailed, but probably after the trip I'm about to go on. It does have a protection film, a front end film, you can just about probably make out the line across the bonnet. Um, so we might take that off and reapply new film over the entire car, but it's not going to get chipped at least for now. Um, driving across this trip um, because the front is protected already um, but yeah it's a very Marmite car I know a lot of people don't understand it don't like it don't get why um, but so far I am loving it and although it's a big car trust me when you drive it it doesn't feel like it it feels so much more nimble the steering is very very pointy um, it's fun it's exciting it's very fruity it's very go out there and sort of get on with it um, and it's a really exciting drive excuse me and obviously I'll show you more talk more about the drive when I'm off on my travels uh, but I'm going to wrap up there for now with the in induction, introduction of the car. Sorry if it's been a little bit windy while I've been out here in the park. Uh, but I wanted to show you all around it and talk a little bit more about the options, about the configuration, about the specification. Um, and show you my new toy, something I'm obviously very, very happy with and I've had an amazing first couple of days with. Uh, but there's going to be a lot more where that came from. For now though, I'll wrap up. Thank you very much for watching. Of course, a shout out to Rollerboard for the hoverboard that I was riding around on earlier. Gonna be <laughs> doing some more stuff with that, I hope. Um, and of course, I'll pop links down below so where you can check them out. Um, if you're interested in getting one, they might even do a special offer around the time this video goes out. So make sure you stay tuned and you're checking that out. And obviously I'll be posting out on different social media platforms as well. Um, for now, I'm gonna head back home. But thank you very much for watching. I'll catch up with you very soon from the road in the Ferrari FF. Cheers. For the very first time, I'm able to take a look at my own McLaren it's my games. It's a way for Bugatti to bring their vehicles to the fans and let you guys out there. I'm driving the Koenigsegg Agera R, and not only am I driving an Agera